welcome to Reservoir Talks. My name is Dr. Rebecca Zash. I'm an assistant professor at Harvard Medical School and work as an infectious disease physician at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. And I'm here with Jackie Wambui. Do you want to introduce yourself? Yes, my name is Jackie Wambui. I'm from Kenya. I am a member of the African Communities Advisory Board. Yes, and I'm happy to be here. <laughs> yeah, yes. it's great to be here with yeah. you. We know each other a little bit. Oh, yes, we do. <laughs> um, so maybe I'll start with just um, saying a bit about SAPAMO, the okay. SAPAMO study, mm -hmm. um, which I've been helping to run since it started. Mm -hmm. But basically, um, last year at IAS, but really in May, mm -hmm. the SAPAMO study reported on this potential safety signal for neural tube defects mm -hmm. with um, dolutegravir taken at the time of conception. Mm -hmm. And we had pretty small numbers then. It was four neural tube defects among 426 women mm -hmm. uh, who were taking their dolutegravir conception. Mm -hmm. But the prevalence was pretty high, you know, close to one in 100. Mm -hmm. And then we had all these other groups of women on other ART at conception, HIV uninfected women, and women who started dolutegravir during pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And they had much, much lower and also expected rates of neural tube defects. Mm -hmm. So we reported to our, you know, FDA and EMA and WHO, um, and that turned into kind of changing guidelines, mm -hmm. getting in the way of treatment, access mm -hmm. for women. Mm -hmm. um, and what we've done in the past year is expanded our study, um, kind of done as much as we can to get more data mm -hmm. because the 426 was such a small number. Mm -hmm. uh, so today we're reporting on um, our updated findings from March of 2019. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we had about 1,275 new DTG conception exposures, mm -hmm. and we found one neural tube defect among mm -hmm. that group. So mm -hmm. the total now is five in 1683. Okay. And so the prevalence is 0.3 percent mm -hmm. compared to last year, 0.94 uh percent. -huh. Um, and so, you know, I think what we kind of concluding here is that. Oh, it's a much better estimate. The numbers are much better. Mm -hmm. It's much smaller than we saw last year, mm -hmm. but it's still higher than all the other groups mm -hmm. uh, by a small amount. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, we think that that's just one small risk, uh, and that there's lots of benefits of dolutegravir. And so when people sort of take our data um, and put it into policy or clinical advice, they really need to think about that. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm really interested to know kind of what, what you think of how this is all played out and what you think of our, our new data and, and what might happen with it. I'll just say the nightmare is over. <laughs> <laughs> the nightmare is finally over. But, but of course the question is, a lot of women are really asking these NTDs, because again we also have to go and find out. What is an NTD? Yeah, right. What does it mean? Does it mean that if I'm on ART I can get an NTD? You know, there were a lot of these misconceptions. So, again, we always insist on the patient literacy yeah. and the fact that the patient should know all these things so that by the time she gets to access, she knows already what, you know, what happens. So, one thing I've been wondering, I don't know if this is a fair question, but do you think if we had been reporting on some risk uh, that was specific to men, Mm -hmm. Do you think that things would have gone the same with these restrictions and stuff? Or do you think this is something because it's related to women's reproductive rights? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a good question. We also asked ourselves the same thing. But I think, I don't think it would have been the same. You don't because, think so? No. Because, um, because like I, women carry so much. Women, women, we can say, are the givers of life. Yeah. And according to what they were saying, it was all because of the baby. The baby. Yeah, you know, and we even asked them, okay, so how come you, you want to judge me according to the fact of whether I can give birth or not? Yeah. But when I came into this world, I didn't choose whether to be a man or a woman, but I know that I am reproductive, and that is my role, especially in Africa. The role of a woman is just to have babies, you know, that's what, yeah. yeah. So, so when you put this restriction, it kind of like confuses the woman, like, so should I even go to the facility to access ART? When I get pregnant, when I, am I going to yeah. tell my health provider? Yeah. And if I do, and she makes noise, would I rather go to the midwife? 
and, and, and not even and go deliver, to the healthcare facility. And not go facility. to the health facility. And then now that is vertical transmission. Yeah. Then again, I'll be blamed for you. Yeah. Here you are, you have a, this, what they call the HIV exposed infant, you know? So yeah. we had ourselves on this. So I don't think it would have been the same. And you know, I mean, I think that you know, part, of, part of the way I see of how, how things happen is that really the global HIV research community wasn't that interested in pregnancy data. And, uh -huh. and I do think that that was a lot of, you know, who was in charge and, and this focus on men and, yes, and yes. communities. And, yeah. you know, we should have been in a position where we get this kind of pregnancy safety data all the time, all the time for all yeah. the new drugs. The time, and yeah. this is just part of the, the yeah. way we roll out ART because, yeah. I mean, half the global population of people living with HIV are women, women. right? Yeah. But a pregnancy research was always treated as this small little niche. Mm -hmm. But I, I really hope that people recognize now that you have to get that in order to, to not have these situations where we're trying to treat men and women differently exactly. and causing all this gender equity, inequity. Yeah. Women are going to get worse outcomes. Yeah. And, and, you know, this needs to be part of just regular research yeah. in all drugs. And, and, and that's the question we're asking. Yeah. Do they even involve women in research? Right. Or, or on top of that, pregnant women in research? Right. Or are they still trying to protect the baby? Yeah. And, and then now when the signal comes out, it's the, you're going to affect your baby, but you never checked. <laughs> right. Whether the drug would work on pregnant women and all that. So right. we're kind of like going back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. 15 months down the line, here we are. And here we are. Trying to look back and trying to make sure that this doesn't happen again. Yeah. So, so for us, I think we just, what we're insisting is just put us in the decision making table. Yes. Yeah. Even, and even when the researcher says, oh, yes, I think this drug is going to work, just check right. and see. Is it, is it okay for, 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 you know? Because if, if at all there was this thing of NTDs, yeah. in the initial stage, you yeah. know, when the drug actually was rolled, especially like now in places like Botswana, of course things would have been done differently. Yeah. Things would have been done differently in terms of access, you know, yeah. in terms of, you know, it didn't have to be found out in a study. Yeah. For, you know, I mean, the study wouldn't have had to, but yeah. find out things that it, because I, I understand, but maybe I don't know, that Sapamu was not even actually looking for this data. It was just to see how, you know, the effect of DTG I mean, and effavorance, isn't right. it? Right, when we Nothing started, do with DTG, DTG DNA, wasn't, right? well, actually it was, was it? started for NTDs mm -hmm. because, and this is the crazy part that we don't get to talk about that much, but oh. effavorance, mm -hmm. a trip, part of Atripla, in the very early days when they were uh, trying out that drug, they found um, in monkey infants mm -hmm. that there were some CNS, some neural tube yes, defects. Yes, and so for many years ago, many, yeah. many years, and we avoided it completely. Again, you can't get right? on and then, you know, <laughs> what our data is showing now is that efavirenz for neural tube defects is completely safe, right? Oh. So what we saw in monkeys is absolutely not. So, you know, it, it, it's really, really challenging, right? Because yeah. we can't count on animals yeah. to tell us what's going to happen in Precisely. people. It's hard to get enough women in these trials, yeah, as you're saying. Yeah. And these, you know, the other thing I think is that people weren't trusting studies like ours from Africa. They were saying these should be done, or we don't believe it unless it's done in the US or Europe, or it's better. But most of the exposures to ARVs are happening in Africa and yes. India, 90%. So right. I hope that from Tsipamo, mm -hmm. people can see these are done well these in Africa. Well. Yeah. Um, and, and maybe that brings me to like what, I, I hope there's some positives that can come out of this. Mm -hmm. You mentioned, you know, just better community engagement in yes. research, in policy making, right. in what's happening. Mm -hmm. I hope that there'll be much more support for, for pregnancy surveillance. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know, maybe also that we can finally incorporate sexual and reproductive health services. I don't know if you if that's you think that's going to happen. Story. Yeah, oh, Lord, that story. The that's integration story has been there for over ten years now, and everybody treats it like this ghost that we don't have to, want to let into the room. Yeah, but we have to deal with the ghosts. Yeah, because there is no way you can tell me I need a long acting and you're not providing it. Right, where I'm going. Right. You want, when I get there, you're telling me, no, 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 go and come back and show us that you have long acting. When it doesn't, when you can't even get it. You can't even get it. Again, long acting may, may work for you, Rebecca, yeah. but it won't work for me. Right. And women didn't even have this information. You know, some women were even faking 
you know, like, what do you, you know, like, what do you need me to go and get? So you go and come back and say, yeah, in fact, I, I was on it like several yeah. years ago. And you see, so the women, I'm telling yeah. you, it just put women in just total disarray. So, so that's why I was saying it's the same body, yeah, <laughs> the same needs. Yeah. So just make sure this woman has everything when she's trying to access ART, because again. When, when, when the woman tests HIV positive, usually she's the one who is blamed for the infection coming into the family. Right. So she really has to take so much, so care, much care so that she doesn't infect her children yeah. and especially her husband. Because so much will happen if that happens, you know? The whole community will be like, yeah, there you are, you know? So, so, so that's why women were saying, yeah. please just give us a drug that we know is going to suppress our virus as fast as for us not to infect our partners. For us not to, to be able to breastfeed comfortably, yeah, you know, yeah. And it sounds like there's going to be, unfortunately, I mean, it's great that we have the new guidelines from WHO saying that DTG is a strong recommendation for all. Mm -hmm. But like you're saying, with the whole issues of contraceptive access that we've been talking about for decades mm -hmm. and it haven't happened, like what's going to actually happen now that we have these new guidelines? Are we going to see this on the ground? They have to put it there. Yeah. They have to because that's what that's what is supposed to happen yeah. in, a, in a facility because HIV is also related to sexual and reproductive health because right. it's as yeah. I'm sorry to say it's a sexual affair. <laughs> because that is how most transmissions occur. Right. Yeah, so a woman now going forward after she's infected has to be very careful about her how she proceeds with her sexual life. Yeah. So you have to provide these things for her. Right. Give her proper contraceptives that work well for her again yeah. in the body. Again, you don't want now contraceptives that are just giving you so many problems, you even regret why you went on it. You see? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and, yeah. and especially for young girls, yeah. when young girls try to access contraception, right. it's a story. I it's, mean, such a, it's such drama. But she's trying to prevent right. all these things from... Because again, she'll be told she had this unintended pregnancy. Yeah. In Africa, it's told you have ruined your future. Be urgent, and you're giving birth to another another life, and it's ruining your future. Apparently, right. you know. So why 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 deny this girl this contraceptive? Yeah. And at the same time, you're blaming her for getting an unintended pregnancy. So these policies really have to change. Yeah. They have to change. No, and and we have to change. We have to change healthcare providers' minds oh, because yeah, those ones. You know, I talk to clinicians in the states. I talk to clinicians in Botswana, mm -hmm. and. You know, this is this is a difficult conversation to have with somebody to yeah. say that there might be this risk. We don't know about other risks. Yeah. Uh, these are the benefits of the drugs. Yeah. And often it's just easier to just make your recommendation yeah. without any explanation. Exactly. And, and our healthcare system, even in the states, isn't set up too too well for there to be a real dialogue yeah. around these issues. Yeah. Yeah. And, and there's I, usually no time. There's no time. The health yeah. worker is overworked. Yes. She has her yeah. own problems. <laughs> yeah. And here you are coming with issues of I need access. And she's just telling you, just get out of my room. I need to serve everyone, you know, yeah. the long line of women who are waiting there. Right. You know? and, you and even in terms of now the contraceptives and the, right. and the long acting. Yeah. Even administering the long acting takes time. Takes time. But they'd rather be standing there with, with injection the injection. This one is better. Yes, take, go. Come back after three months. You see, that's faster. Yeah. You are able to 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 pick the numbers yeah. that the donors ask for, you know, how many women did you put on, on yeah. depot, and you'll say 1,000, compared to the, 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 you know, the long acting, which will take, you know, a longer time, right. and you'll have less, you know, numbers, so yeah. it's just, yeah, so we need more time, you know, you the healthcare worker, well, do they you also need to be sensitized, yeah. because again, sometimes we need to be sensitive to them, because they are human, yeah. but they're not given the support to be able to provide these services properly. Yeah. You know, yeah, you no. have a facility that is right. maybe the only one in, in that serves so many people, and you're, you know, and again, you know, the the, the mentality in, in in most places in Africa that the doctor is always right. right. So the doctor will sit there and say, "I'm not giving it to you," and that's, that's the end right. of that. There was never a time you could confront the doctor and tell him, "No, I don't think you're giving me the right medication." Yeah. You see. But do you think there's a role for the recognizing that? There's a lot of barriers to getting good treatment information to the clients. Oh, is there a role for community work and of activism? Course, and, of course, there is, and yeah. and this is one thing. In the early days, there used to be treatment literacy. And it used yeah. to be like a really, you know, intense thing. Intense. Like huh. people are sat down for a long, long time. Yeah. I remember even before I got onto treatment, 
it took long. Because there was nothing like test and treat. Yeah. No. You go back and the doc, he looks at you and says, ah, ah, you're not yet ready. Because they'll ask you some questions. Yeah. You are on, going to be put on lifelong treatment. Are you able to take your drug every day? They had to make sure of that before they put you on the drug. You see? Yeah. And they tell you about the side effects. Yeah. They tell you this is what you're going to feel. This is what is going to happen when you go back into the community and taking pills every day. Are you ready for that? Right. You know, thorough counseling. But these days... Now it's just you. You show up. You get your drugs. I was telling you about the women who are being now... When now one drug is faced out and the yeah. drug was recommended, they were told there's a new drug. Here you are. Go take it. Okay. Then again, now you come back and they, you're told, no, 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 no. You're within that age bracket. Now we have to take the drug away from you which didn't make any sense because yeah. again the woman was like okay you in the initially you didn't mention about my age you didn't even ask me how old i was by the way and here you are now all of a sudden you want to know my age <laughs> you want to know whether i want to get pregnant and i have four children rebecca i never planned for any of my kids yeah. you know what i mean i yeah. just got pregnant and you know and once you get pregnant now you plan for the next <laughs> and your child you right. don't need all these barriers telling you no you can't take you know yeah so it's just anyway so so what, what do you think we're going to be talking about next year ah, at 2020? Just how we did the last one year yeah. perfectly. We have the integration. At least we have the policies yeah. that are helping women access you know, all and, these services. And our ministries of health are listening to what is happening yeah. on the ground. And again, sensitizing the healthcare workers. Yeah. They also need, they need support, by the way. We can't really blame them for everything. I, because I even agree. them... Mm -hmm. Some of them even may be living with HIV, mm -hmm. but they can't open up because of the stigma. Right. We still have so much stigma, Rebecca, you wouldn't believe it. It's, it's, it's still there, you know? It's and tough. I remember even when we were advocating for this drug, people were like, but, but why, you know, like even why are we even advocating for drugs? You people, in fact, should just be grateful that you, that you have, have free medication, you know? Yeah. So stigma, stigma is one thing that, yeah. uh, that's the other ghost now on the other side of the room that is yeah. now, we need a lot of work. No, I think, I mean, I, I think next year we're going to be hearing a lot about barriers, Yeah. La just as you're saying, barriers to treatment, barriers to access, difficulty in the healthcare system with implementation, in information. Yeah. But I hope we're also going to be hearing about how some successes of getting information Precisely. to people yeah. and, and maybe even better outcomes yeah, overall. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I, I'm, I'm kind of hopeful we've, as you've said, put this behind yeah. us a bit. We have, and can but kind we of still move have on. But we, have, we really have a but, long but way to go. But it's nice because, you know, now we have, you know, the big organization, like the WHO yeah. now has set up a, yeah. a, a, a women's advisory group, which I think oh, is quite great. good. Yeah. Although we had begged the DG, please just take away that question. Please take it away. But now 15 months later, there we are. Yeah. We also have UNAIDS talking about putting communities at the center because yeah. they realize that communities are the way to go. That's why we're doing so this. So now we're hoping to wait. Now hear from researchers saying something, almost the same thing, because right. you always have to think about who is taking this drug. Yeah. And is it even possible to take this drug every day? You know? Yeah. Well, I, I, I have to say that, you know, I met you last year. I know. And it's been one year. Of just, it's been I one know. year. But, but it's really helped me mm -hmm. to think about how to make my presentations yeah. and how this what this all means yeah. to have had this like personal relationship yeah, with yeah. and and it's been so great so. i know and it has also I, helped really me nice. learn so much about research <laughs> yeah. and trying to figure out exactly what what even happens in research trials yeah. you know we all we had to do this education yeah. we had to get people to explain to us this is what happens you know this is why you know and i remember the first time we heard about entity i kept asking what is this talking about and the first thing i asked is how come they didn't test this drug before it was rolled out? I was given this long story about it. So here we are. Here anyway, we are. Yeah. yeah. We learned some. Yeah, we learned a lot, by the way. 